Thank you very much, Susan, for these uh, kind words. I'm very pleased to be welcoming you here in uh, and seem very honored uh, to uh, uh, say a few words in front of uh, such a prestigious uh, audience. Um, it's, I think we all share the fact that data is, is transforming uh, uh, massively. Is, did I change anything? No, it's fine. Uh, healthcare, uh, but the question is, how do we uh, uh, make this change a reality? How we move from innovation to usage and how we can make sure that every one that needs uh, these uh, improvements can actually benefit from it. Um, and so in line with this, a number of countries have been uh, heavily involved in trying to uh, design uh, strategies, policy, uh, to make sure that uh, they can promote a large uh, use of uh, data, not only uh, in terms of collection, but also providing the whole chain uh, that ensure that at the end the patient really benefits uh, from the data in terms of uh, uh, outcomes, uh, follow-up, uh, etc. And uh, so France has been uh, heavily involved uh, since, the, since the last uh, years at the uh, government level to provide uh, frameworks uh, that will uh, also <coughs> probably be um, interesting in an in international uh, vision, uh, at least at the European level. Uh, to promote uh, healthcare data uh, uh, strategy uh, in everyday uh, functioning of the uh, healthcare system. And so there's been a number of uh, uh, public policies, uh, new agencies, uh, and of course fundings, uh, trying to get together the right experts, uh, the right organization, uh, and the right tools uh, to make sure that uh, at the end, uh, everyday data is collected, used, uh, and uh, uh, can improve uh, not only uh, the everyday patient care, but also the uh, overall functioning of the healthcare system. And to do so, of course, it's been uh, long known that we need common language. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the long conference is uh, essential uh, uh, to coordinate this and to make sure that not only at the level of one state, but at an international level, we can have coordinated strategies and coordinated languages to make sure that we can share the data. Um, and so at different levels of maturity, uh, different countries have been uh, heavily involved in developing such uh, initiatives. And I think the recent uh, month, uh, and the reason why you couldn't meet personally uh, uh, for the last uh, years, is, is a very good example uh, on the uh, acceleration we need to take and also on the fact uh, that uh, even though we had an, a pandemic and an emergency, we can align ourselves and we can align objectives uh, to have efficient uh, work. And uh, in France and in other countries, uh, the uh, COVID outbreak has been a, a major accelerator for uh, healthcare data, uh, and not only uh, uh, helping uh, uh, systems uh, to emerge, or uh, very um, uh, important realization to become uh, everyday usage, uh, but also showing uh, the world uh, that uh, healthcare data is absolutely uh, essential and that we can, uh, in a very efficient way, promote new tools, uh, new usage uh, for an everyday basis. Uh, and so in France, it's been clear that, for example, the uh, uh, telemedicine uh, platforms, uh, the use of large database for COVID uh, uh, handling, um, the design uh, of uh, drugs and vaccines or clinical trials helped by uh, AI-driven uh, uh, strategy, etc., is an essential uh, uh, benefit, and it has to be some uh, from the difficult month uh, we've all been, been um, uh, through. And so the question is how we can, we can uh, leverage uh, with these uh, uh, realities and make sure that we can spread what's been done in COVID in a very efficient way in other uh, uh, sectors and, and to a larger extent uh, in the um, overall uh, healthcare sector for cancers, uh, for an other infectious disease, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And this is the crucial uh, question of uh, having this chain of, of innovation that goes faster and faster and faster and this essential uh, um, uh, end of line of uh, usage for everyday patients, making sure that when we provide innovation, we can make sure that it goes uh, to the right patient because it has its right moment and because it also has the right uh, sustainability and economical uh, model, which is absolutely essential if we want to provide uh, end of uh, line uh, uh, benefits. And so this is with this vision that we're trying to help uh, healthcare data strategy to, to grow at a national level, uh, uh, but also as France is heavily involved in this uh, European coordinated strategy at an international level. <coughs> 
and so um, it's uh, really important uh, to have this space of uh, exchanges of uh, debates uh, uh, that you are having today uh, and that other groups uh, are having uh, in the other uh, data aspect uh, throughout the world to make sure that we can uh, uh, define international standards, that we can define international vision, international strategies, helping every country uh, to move forward uh, in, the, um, uh, in the data strategies. And so it's really interesting from my perspective as a healthcare uh, provider to see that uh, when I was a student, uh, some of the uh, uh, golden uh, um, goals uh, for helping people was to uh, define uh, or design new drugs, and we were uh, able to compare with uh, randomized clinical trials whether such drug would be better than the actual drug uh, or whether such surgical strategy would be better than uh, another surgical strategy. What we see now in the uh, scientific literature is that it's not about drug or surgical strategy. It's about uh, uh, data strategy. And so what we see is that when you compare uh, strategy to take care of patients supported by data, by AI, uh, et cetera, then you can have better outcomes uh, for, uh, for a number of uh, patients. And so showing that uh, what we n all know in this room, uh, data really helps the patient every day and uh, being able to uh, put it in an objective uh, uh, way in scientific paper is absolutely essential to promote uh, further uh, data strategy. Um, I was discussing with, the, uh, with uh, one of the French uh, famous philosophers uh, specialized in healthcare, and um, uh, we were uh, having a, a, a time on trying to think what are the big revolutions in healthcare. And he was mentioning that one of his uh, first important step in healthcare was the uh, uh, implication of science a few years ago, uh, of course. Uh, but it really made uh, a changing step uh, for healthcare, moving from an art uh, with the uh, ancient Greek uh, uh, literature that you all know uh, to a scientific approach. Uh, and. Um, uh, the second step he mentioned was the uh, ability uh, for everyone to access healthcare. So the social vision uh, of healthcare, making sure that uh, everyone can actually pay uh, to be uh, treated and cured. Uh, and the third one, uh, to according to him, was actually what's happening right now with the uh, uh, digital tools. Uh, so it's not only about you know using data, but also the intermediation that uh, digital aspects provide uh, in, in the healthcare system uh, for him was an essential revolution. And so this is the time we're in, and I like very much your uh, uh, tagline, uh, driving change, because this is what we're doing. Uh, driving change and, and making, so I'm not sure the term uh, revolution resonates in France, uh, of course, <laughs> but at least a, a very strong evolution. Uh, and so this is what we need to, to promote uh, uh, in our uh, healthcare system uh, because this is the, the, the future. Um, so this is uh, what we're trying to um, uh, promote at Paris Santé Campus uh, also and um, uh, with the vision that uh, to be able to drive these important changes, we need everyone at the table. Uh, it's not uh, only a data scientist. It's not only healthcare provider. It's not only... Uh, uh, startups, uh, etc. But given the overall transformation that's provided by a uh, data strategy, we need to have every uh, healthcare player uh, uh, around. And so we're creating an ecosystem uh, of uh, actors with uh, researchers, caregivers, patients, uh, of course, citizens, students who are the future of uh, healthcare, uh, and of course, uh, engineers, mathematicians. Uh, startups, large corporate groups, and institutions to make sure that everyone can discuss together and uh, uh, design and invent uh, the way data will change the, uh, the uh, healthcare system uh, uh, for tomorrow. Uh, and this is uh, more or less what we've seen uh, uh, growing spontaneously in uh, different cities. Of course, you can think of Boston with biotech, uh, in uh, Switzerland with Baal as well, uh, that we're actively uh, um, putting together in one place uh, that uh, really uh, has the ambition to be uh, very emblematic and to lead the way uh, uh, in terms of uh, ecosystem for healthcare uh, data. Uh, so we've opened this uh, center in Paris uh, um, a year ago, so it's brand new and I'm uh, really uh, 
excited, of course, to extend an invitation to uh, all of you who would like to, to stop on your way back uh, in Paris uh, or uh, any time uh, else. Um, as it's really a, a unique uh, opportunity uh, to gather expertise and to gather uh, uh, vision, uh, and of course, uh, creating synergistic uh, uh, vision uh, around the healthcare data. And uh, so we're in, in charge of uh, showing that this uh, vision is the right one and that we can uh, uh, actually create value uh, of in terms of uh, science for the researchers, for, uh, for the health uh, uh, providers, but also in terms of economy uh, for uh, the startups and for the, the company. And of course, we have a very international vision uh, trying to connect with other hubs and networks uh, throughout, the, throughout the world. Uh, and uh, so what you are uh, doing in terms of uh, interoperability and, and common language is absolutely essential to make sure that uh, we can uh, speak the same uh, uh, words in terms of, uh, of uh, data and uh, uh, connection uh, system. Uh, so in line with this, of course, we work uh, very strongly on the data. So I won't go into details, but it's about uh, data collection, uh, security, um, uh, valorization, uh, the value we can create with the data, uh, sharing, uh, technical aspects, etc. But we also focus on the skills, uh, and uh, we absolutely need people who understand the value of data, how you treat them, how you can handle them, what are the impacts uh, at the end of line for an uh, everyday patient. Uh, and we also very much focus on, on the way uh, societies understand what's happening with data. Uh, we have seen, <coughs> again, with the COVID, uh, a number of questions raising uh, ethical questions uh, about uh, uh, citizens uh, uh, trying to understand what uh, would be carried out with their own data, whether they would it would be anonymized or not, and uh, who would actually own them, and uh, uh, what are they, they, they will be used for. And there's an essential need uh, in our societies uh, for explanation uh, of what healthcare data means, and to a larger extent, uh, what data uh, means, not uh, only, uh, only in healthcare. Um, so we're uh, very much involved in this uh, uh, task, making sure that we promote uh, a mutual understanding between uh, healthcare system, uh, citizens, uh, uh, about uh, what's uh, in, um, in the process of with this uh, revolution of, uh, of data. Uh, and in line with this, it's absolutely essential, and this is our vision, that we keep uh, uh, some of the uh, ethical principle and human guarantees uh, the, um, that we are uh, defending in our everyday work in, uh, in the healthcare system uh, align with the new data strategy sh uh, showing that we are uh, vigilant uh, on the way data are used and that uh, we can guarantee that it's used for common goods. Uh, and so there are a number of uh, French initiatives as well who uh, try and promote this, uh, this vision uh, and, and try and define the right use of these, uh, of these uh, data. Um, so again, I'm really happy that uh, um, these discussions uh, can occur in an international uh, uh, setting. Uh, it's absolutely uh, essential for people to, to share the vision, to uh, advance uh, uh, the different works. Uh, and uh, I think you've understood that France uh, will be uh, uh, always a place to welcome this kind of uh, initiatives and always a place to uh, try and uh, not only participate, but sometimes lead also the, the discussions. Uh, and there are a number of uh, uh, recent uh, um, events or initiatives in France showing the way uh, the uh, government really uh, uh, involves uh, the, the whole French healthcare system in this revolution. Uh, so I mentioned a number of uh, uh, public policies, funding, etc. Uh, but also the, the COVID had made uh, uh, France realize at some point that there was a need for a heavy um, uh, reinvestment uh, in healthcare and especially in innovation. And data strategy is part of this uh, uh, um, uh, initiative. Uh, that's called uh, France 2030. So it's basically what happens in 10 years from now and how we get to that uh, with a number of uh, uh, planning, uh, strategic planning, but also a very uh, concrete uh, action where data strategy hold a, a very good strong place. And of course, Paris Santé Campus, uh, which I'm happy to, to lead, is part of that uh, strategy. Um, so of course, I think it uh, was a quite cruel um, um, uh, 
recognition for France uh, to be the uh, country that hosted uh, Louis Pasteur uh, 100 years ago and not being able to uh, design a vaccine for uh, 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 an epidemic uh, uh, such as the, the COVID. And it made everybody realize the need uh, to heavily reinvest uh, in healthcare. And so France 2030 is part of that uh, common uh, realization. Uh, and uh, it, the fact is that there hasn't been times where there was such massive uh, financial investment uh, in, in healthcare. So our goal together uh, uh, with you and, and uh, the French uh, ecosystem and to a larger extent with the European ecosystem is to take advantage of this. Uh, this is a reality. Uh, there's a lot of money on the table. But we, so we need to, to take it, we need to use it, and we, we need to make sure that we can use it for uh, the, the right purposes. Uh, and this would be my call to action uh, together. Let's move forward and uh, let's uh, take advantage of this uh, situation and make uh, data revolution uh, a reality. Thank you very much. Sorry, of course, if there are questions, I'm happy to answer any of them. <laughs> but it's early in the morning, I understand. <laughs> so I have, I have one question. This is Marjorie Rollins. And, you know, how do you keep the momentum of innovation that we realized with the pandemic that really motivated us to figure out challenges? How do how do you see us, that, you know, go, us keeping that momentum going forward? Yeah, well, thanks. Um, it, it's an essential question, and it's uh, really interesting because what I see is that um, it's, it's more about uh, being able to intake uh, and transform all these innovation. Um, and then just, uh, you know, keeping the, the wheel uh, rolling. Um, if, if you look at some of the standards uh, to measure the, uh, the uh, innovation or speed of innovation, um, you're probably familiar with, the, uh, with Moore's Law, uh, which uh, measures the, the speed of uh, CPU. Uh, and so basically, uh, it's an exponential speed. Uh, since um, uh, uh, the, the beginning of this uh, measure, um, if you look more specifically at, at healthcare uh, techniques, uh, and uh, I want to mention uh, genomics, for example, or genetic uh, testing, um, you actually realize that uh, the speed of evolution of techniques for genetic uh, evolves faster uh, than Moore's law, uh, which means that uh, healthcare innovation, more specifically, goes faster than than uh, you know general uh, technical progress, and so. What I'm saying is that the challenges for us is more to be able to actually, uh, you know, transfer all these innovation in our everyday uh, uh, usage uh, and make sure that at the end you really have 100% adoption, uh, then keeping the wheel uh, rolling and making the innovation flowing. Because innovation is, is you know, a, a train and it goes fast and it goes faster and faster and faster. And, and so basically having an exponential speed means that you double the speed in a period of time. Um, so when I started the, uh, my studies, for example, uh, knowledge in healthcare would uh, change every five years. Now it's changing every two years. And probably in a few years uh, or so, it will change every year, et cetera. Um, and so one of the uh, main challenges, of, uh, since we have human organization and uh, probably face this in your discussions about the you know, long, um, is that you have a wheel of innovation that goes very, very fast, uh, but you want to make sure that at the end it really benefits uh, patients. And so, for example, uh, I mentioned uh, earlier the um, uh, uh, telemedicine uh, platforms or uh, being able to have a, a rendezvous uh, through uh, computerized uh, systems. This became uh, really mainstream uh, uh, with the COVID, and I'm sure it's probably the same in other uh, countries. And yet, at the moment, we see in France that it's only um, 30 to 40 percent of uh, meetings that are actually appointed by an uh, electronic system. So we're still far away from you know the uh, uh, full adoption. Uh, and so there are a number of examples like this 
uh, where we need to uh, make sure that uh, the end of line uh, uh, input is is really uh, full. So so to me, um, of course, innovation needs to be uh, uh, nurtured. Uh, but we need to, to look at the other uh, end of the line and make sure that uh, it really transforms into, into uh, daily use, 100% uh, uh, for every aspect. Uh, but more to answer your question, of course, uh, so France has a strong um, uh, history in innovation and there's a large uh, startup community, very, uh, um, very active, very dynamic. Uh, and so, um, of course, uh, it's about, you know, uh, having strong education uh, for students because they are the ones that uh, create uh, startups, having uh, f uh, financial levers uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, people can create company. Uh, and we're in a situation uh, uh, a little different than other countries where we see that there's a very active, very dynamic uh, startup creation on <coughs> innovation tissue. Uh, but it needs to be transformed uh, into great successes. Mm -hmm. And that phase uh, for us uh, is too uh, hazardous. Uh, and so, you know, the two years uh, gap uh, for a startup, for example, or for an innovation, uh, if you don't take it uh, to a daily use, then it dies uh, because it doesn't have any, uh, an economical true. model, because uh, it's not the right question, etc. And so we need to make sure that, of course, we maintain this innovation uh, wheel but it's on and it's fast, uh, and that we help this innovation really grows and become mainstream. And that's, to me, that's the main, uh, the main issue today. Thank you for that. Any other questions? Yes. Yes, I have a question. Um, I'm curious about your efforts to engage the community around the use of data. You mentioned that that was part of your mission. Could you share a little bit more about what what exactly that looks like and how you're approaching it? Yes, of course. So it, it's not about, um, you know, uh, having a co-localization. It's, it's um, whoops, sorry. <laughs> Don't want to spoil. Where is he? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Um, trying to keep people's attention. <laughs> so it's not about uh, uh, just having co-localization. It's, it's really uh, having exchanges and, and uh, synergy, uh, which sometimes can be a challenge. Uh, so there are a number of countries where, you know, the public sector and the private sector are uh, in silos. Um, and so it's, it's we're gathering people who are spread over the territory. Uh, they're already existing. They don't know each other, they don't speak to each other. Maybe sometimes they understand they should meet, but they don't know how to meet, or they have understood that they should meet, but they uh, didn't meet. Um, so it's really more about uh, putting together a program where people understand the value of, uh, of the ecosystem, of the synergy, and uh, we, uh, just like in every synergy, uh, go beyond uh, one plus one uh, equals two. Uh, but equals three, four, or five. Uh, and so to, to create this, uh, we have a number of programs uh, of, uh, at professional levels, but also at social levels, uh, to make sure that people uh, meet together. Uh, and so uh, there are a number of uh, conferences, training, small groups, uh, uh, animation, etc. And so the, the whole program is called a shaker. So it, you get the idea of uh, mixing everyone together. Uh, and of course, we very much value both professional interactions, as I said, as social interactions in a number of, uh, you know, sports program, after works, uh, etc. Uh, and so we try to uh, drive probably 95% of the interactions, but we still leave 5% uh, for what we call the uh, serendipity of the coffee machine. Uh, of the uh, elevators, and it actually happens. Uh, uh, it's really interesting. So the the challenge for us is um, because we have uh, different worlds. So we have uh, uh, KPIs and uh, you know uh, outcome measures uh, for every world, uh, but trying and define uh, outcome measures for the whole ecosystem, uh, and and measuring the value that you know uh, researchers uh, can get as well as the startups, uh, uh, startups where they uh, create common projects. Is uh, is really a challenge so because we know how to measure, you know, publications, uh, grants, etc. We know how to measure um, new jobs, uh, new fundraising strategy, etc. But the way people get together uh, is also a research uh, question for us. Thank you.
think we're going to have a video presentation for Mr. Miru. Can you cue the video presentation? No sound. Hello everyone, uh, welcome in uh, ANSI Les Pensiers Conference Center. Welcome to the Low Inc. Conference and more especially welcome to our guest speakers, uh, Marjorie Rollins, the head of uh, Low Inc. and also Professor uh, Antoine Tenier in charge of uh, Paris Santé Campus. So welcome in Pensier, it is a very uh, special place uh, where many conferences and meetings have been held for the last uh, 55 years, I guess, uh, reuniting uh, people from all over the world, talking about uh, uh, public health matters, no, no barriers between uh, human and uh, animal health. And I'm very glad to see that uh, today we are hosting uh, this important uh, conference aiming at working on uh, data and digital health and uh, everything that we need to, to, to do together to collaborate to, uh, to develop new, new approaches. Um, so data is the big topic, huh? data health is the hot uh, topic, huh? the idea is really to, uh, to enable uh, the sharing of a knowledge base, uh, sharing uh, tools, informatic tools, to make sure also that we progress in, the, in that space with the ultimate goal to, uh, to improve collaboration and the health of uh, patients and uh, consumers uh, all over the world. So if I look now, uh, if I take my head of a uh, CEO of uh, Biomerieux, we are in the in vitro diagnostic business, and uh, in the end, uh, we provide information. We develop systems, uh, reagents, but everything that matters is the, the quality, the relevance of the information that we uh, develop for the benefit of the biologist and uh, the physicians. So I think it's very important that uh, this group is being uh, uh, united today to work on the, all the different uh, approaches that will allow us to have a better comprehensive view and approach. I, I believe also that the harmonization is a, key, is a key topic in a world which is becoming a bit more, I would say, uh, challenged with some uh, approach by, uh, by regions. I believe that the work that you are doing to, to develop a standardized uh, uh, approach is really, really relevant uh, for today and for the years uh, to come. We are by very, very proud of the collaboration that we have with Loing for the last uh, almost uh, 10 years and very happy again to welcome this, uh, this conference to help advance uh, interoperability and also for optimized patient care all over the world. So I wish you a very fruitful, and nice and uh, interesting meetings in the, in the nice place of uh, ANSI. All the best to you. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Professor Tenier and Mr. Meru for their very engaging and uh, gracious remarks. Um, <clears throat> we're a little bit ahead of, ahead of schedule and we have to do a little bit of rearranging as April has uh, advised me. So we're going to take about a 10 minute break before we come back for the keynote address.